Jola. <laughs> what is up, everyone? Welcome to Reality Coach Podcast, episode 18. And today we're going to be talking about not Big Brother Canada 4. We're going to be talking about Sequesta. That's right, guys. As many of you that are watching this probably already know, our buddy Chris, <laughs> Christopher Wallace himself, was on Sequester 2.0. Yes, so, Chris. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about your experience on the show. Oh my god. So, our, the experience of going on to Sequester was absolutely ridiculous. This is not a game like any other. It's not like Big Brother. It's not like Survivor. This game is a mental clusterfuck. So, let's talk about the, the first day. Or actually. So, uh, yeah. So, okay. So, what yeah. I was going to say is I have everything down as like cycles. So, we're mm-hmm. going to be talking about every cycle is a different day. So, let's talk about the very um, cycle one. So, there's 12 of us and. Um, some of us in this game, you get twists and you get punishments and you get awards. So the big twist that was revealed was the ejection twist. Um, in Sequester, there are six different rooms that you get to go into, mm-hmm. and um, in the beginning, there's three people in each room, and that's how it starts off. And you get a little time to talk to these people. And so Audrey announces that the ejection twist is happening, and that every time you go into a room, you have to get somebody out. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty crazy because if you're talking to somebody, someone can come in and kick you out. Well, they have to. So. Uh, I guess it starts off with um, LLC competition. LLC competition is the only competition you can pretty much guarantee to save yourself. And this competition is you have to get as many clothes as you possibly can, mm-hmm. and um, and you have to wear as many clothing items as possible. And how did you do in that competition, Chris? I mean, I did okay. I didn't obviously I didn't win it, so it was that the one you had a penalty on? Yes, that I'm why gonna, I'm gonna you, get into that. Why did you have a penalty though? I feel like I got the penalty because a lot of people just don't like me. <laughs> and I knew I was going to get some sort of penalty, and foreshadowing later, I'll get more. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, all right, so what happens is Zoe wins that one, so she's safe from elimination. And before we get into who's going out and what's happening, I want to talk about the awards, and I also want to talk about the dis- uh, punishments that we got. Okay. So we only had one award prize given out, and it was a $25 gift card. It's a subway. Oh, wow. That sounds golly gee great, Chris. <laughs> and the person who won that was Derek. Um, the punishments. Oh, there's also one more award. It's the two-vote advantage. We didn't find out about this advantage until, until after yeah, the show ended. And we find out that Elise actually got it. Yeah. Yeah, good for her. And damn, did I not know that. <laughs> and she hit it. She didn't tell anybody about it until like the end of the season. She, it was great. She said she didn't even vote in the majority that week either. I mean, She voted Jimmy out. Yeah, I mean, that's a big surprise. Yeah, right? So for the punishments, uh, Tiffany had to do like the, you know, like how Judd mm-hmm. did in season 15. She had to do like all the exercises and some of that, <laughs> which was pretty funny. That's some cool stuff. Um, Brennan had to uh, write everyone's name down on a, what a, a marker pretty much when production told them to. Oh boy. Um, I got a 30 second penalty and Brittany got, had his stuff uh, two humongous marshmallows in her mouth and she couldn't talk about throughout the whole which night. Which was hilarious. Which is hysterical, yes. Oh boy. So everyone got their punishments and awards, and within this night, um, this is at, I'm talking about this is after the show, so mm-hmm. things were revealed. Um, there were, I, from my understanding, there was three alliances that were formed. Okay. Um, there was a tr- uh, three person alliance basically. called there was a three person alliance called the Holy Trinity Alliance mm-hmm. with um, Brendan, Eddie, and Tiffany, and they were in the same room. So obviously, you know, the first night they make alliances really quickly to benefit their game. For those of you that watch the uh, <laughs> that watch the quest, so you know that's a fucking powerful trio right there. That is a dominant oh fucker. God. Cluster fuck. Put in the same room night one. Yes. Jesus. And I... A final three deal was made between me, Bryce, and Lindsay. Let's talk a little bit, a little bit about why you think they put you in that room. They put me in that room because I was in the semifinal round with Bryce, and Bryce and me were arguing within the semifinal yeah. round. So they expected a Deborah vs. Blake between mm-hmm. us. Anyone who watches that is Deborah. Uh, Blake didn't like Deborah because of the semifinal round and vice versa. This time they were trying to do the same thing, but me and Bryce, we knew better. Yeah. We we're like, fuck that, we're working together. That's right. They didn't want any drama night one. They, Chris and Bryce, both knew that in order to play this game properly, they had to look past semifinals mm-hmm. and collaborate together. I exactly. Mean, yes. And obviously, Lindsay. And, and Bryce at this point, it. um, it was better for my game to mm-hmm. form this three-person alliance, not only because they were in the same room as me. And it would be really cool that, you know, you make a final three with somebody who you hated in semifinals. <laughs> it just made sense because it, it, everyone would see them two as the bigger target over myself. Yes. Bryce th- does sign language and Lindsay yeah. is uh, legally deaf. So if, if it came down to them trying to target one of us, 
they would target those two over me because mm-hmm. I'm not really like into the, you know what I mean? Right. That was Chris's mindset at the time. Also, another alliance was formed called the Doppelgangers Alliance, and this <laughs> alliance literally was like ten seconds made, and it was hysterical. It was between me and me and Jimmy. We talk really quickly, and Jimmy's just like, I want to work with you. And I'm like, okay, we're we'll, we'll just going to call this For those who watch the show, this is when it all began. Episode one, right from the get-go. And this the group- Chris and Jimmy alliance that, <laughs> that ended everything, basically. <laughs> so this episode was absolutely, the cycle was absolutely crazy. Because oh, everyone's yeah. going into rooms. Everyone's like playing the name game. Like, who are we voting out? What are we doing? We don't have that much time. And names were thrown out like crazy. Derek's name, I was convincing people to get rid of Derek. And I'm going to explain that. Derek's name was thrown out there. Zoe mentioned my name. Bryce's name was thrown out there. Jimmy's name was also thrown out there. I think Tiffany's name was also kind of thrown out there too a little bit mm-hmm. as well. And like the voting, I'm pretty sure like was absolutely ridiculous. Okay. It wasn't like your average like unanimous vote. It was very very close. Like I'm pretty sure it was close between Bryce and Derek. R- probably. So and I- Bryce was originally supposed to go home that cycle, and wow. he didn't because. Moy saved him. So let me ask you a little bit about this Derek thing. A lot okay. of people seemed, uh, when I was looking it up, seemed to think that Derek went home over a Subway gift card. Absolutely not. Is that true? No. What actually happened? Okay, Tell so us I needed to, I needed to figure out, because I knew that Tiffany and Derek were going to be working with each other hardcore, because okay. Tiffany, like, I just felt like their bond would be, like, extremely <coughs> um, close. A legitimate bond. And when okay. I was asking about Derek to Tiffany... She was pretty much, she was kind of like persuading me to vote somebody else out. And at that point, I really didn't care. Right. So I asked Tiffany, who else, what's another option? What else do we have to do? She didn't mention any names. I'm pretty sure she wanted Bryce out. And she probably knew that me and Bryce were close at the time. Fair enough. Fair just enough. because of the fact that we were throwing out Derek's name at the time. And she, it was just difficult at that time to figure out a name. So she didn't want Derek out. And Derek, we had the numbers to get rid of Derek. I think Brendan and... Um, Eddie won Derek out as well. Hmm. So it worked okay. out well. Derek got out, and that cycle was crazy. Yeah. It was like, I'd never seen anything like this before. I've watched the first season, and the first cycle, they're just like, they have pillow, they have pillowcases over their head, and they're doing endurance comp. <laughs> and this one, we're, we're fucking like getting thousands of clothed, I- clothed items. We're all getting punishment. Derek apparently was part of Unfiltered Feeds. I had no idea Derek was part of Unfiltered Feeds, by the way. Had absolutely no clue. I really wanted him gone because he was going to work with Tiffany. And Tiffany can confirm this too as well. He, She did want to work with their, Derek. And I really wanted to work with Tiffany. And I knew that the only way that I could have worked with her is if I got out somebody like Derek. Speaking of Unfiltered Feeds, so Derek got out. And what do you think What do you think about his uh, interview on Unfiltered Feeds afterwards? I think he was just pissed off because he didn't want to be the first person out. So at, well, that, no time, so at that time, he was like blaming Bryce for the whole entire... Um, him getting eliminated, but it was actually me. And you a little bit, too. I think he said your name, too. And they called me the ringleader at that time, so I just wanted somebody out, and then Derek got out, so I didn't really care at that time. Alright, so let's talk about day number two. Okay, so cycle two was... Cycle two. So cycle two, I'm going to talk about the punishments and the awards. Um, So the punishment is... There is the date punishment, which means that you have to be secluded in one room for a certain period of time with somebody else. So I got that punishment. (laughs) They also have the cross-dressing punishment, where if you're a guy, you have to dress as a girl. If you're a girl, you have to dress as a guy. I also got that punishment. Huh. I'm noticing a trend here now, Chris. Um, the, the question one, like, you have to speak in questions. Bryce got that punishment. Wow. And then um, someone had to be a band leader and get people to join their band, and that was Brendan. Yeah. So Brendan got two punishments already. And there was an, a reward, A too. reward is the soy candle, and I got that. Huh. So Chris got two punishments and an award, episode two. Cycle two, yeah. Damn. Okay, so tell us a little bit about how those things might have affected your game. How right. did you walk into the game at first thinking with how uh, you then had to adjust based on the Right, that so you got? there, cycle one, I was getting a lot of information about who wanted to get me out, and there was, I didn't want make people to think that I was a strong strategic manipulator. <laughs> because apparently people thought about that. <laughs> well, because everybody opinion. watches Unfiltered Feeds and everybody watches the interviews and they would think, like, this person's a big target. And I was trying to do as much damage control as I possibly could. So what I did was I took people on the dates that I thought that were going to go after me. And I wanted to do as much damage control as possible to further my game. So, right, so who did you take on dates? The first person I took was Zoe. Because Bryce okay. went to me and told me that Smart. Zoe wanted to get me out. 
And to me, I wanted to talk to Zoe because Zoe and I were very close to getting on the first season. So I used that to my advantage. I was trying to do as much damage control as possible. Listen, like, like, yes, I was trying to build a connection there. We could have worked together really well. And I told her, like, listen, I don't care that you threw my name out. It is what it is, but let's move past this because if we, if the bigger targets are going after the bigger targets, the people that are flying on the radar are going to get much further in the game. Okay. And I feel like she would she understood that a lot. Okay, who was the next person you took on? Brendan was the next person because, to me, I really, really wanted to work with Brendan. Be- okay. uh, Brendan socially knew how to talk to everybody. He's very well likable. And to me, he seems like someone, during the long term wise, would be a big threat for people. And I thought that... If I worked with him, we're both right. I'm a strategic threat. He's a social threat. We can work together and we can, you know, maneuver our way possible. And nobody would ever expect it because we have we have big personalities, but we have different different personalities. From an outside perspective, it definitely looked like Brendan definitely had everyone. And that was fine with me. I didn't care because the first cycle I got rid of Derek. Yeah. And second cycle, I did not care who went out. Honestly, as but my goal was to get a girl out to make sure that an all girl alliance, an all girl alliance, was voided. So very smart. During that second cycle, Brennan comes up and says that he wants to get rid of Lindsay because Lindsay's thrown out Tiffany's name. At that time, I really want to work with Tiffany, and I, I didn't even know Lindsay was doing this. Throughout the whole entire night. Oh yeah, she was. And she didn't tell me about this. She should have told me before who who she was going to throw on the bus. And she, Lindsay was saying that the reason why she was throwing Tiffany's name out there is because she really was persuading Lindsay to vote somebody else other than Derek. Okay. And oh, that. Okay. And to me, that wasn't smart. It, the way she went about it could have been a little bit differently. She could have made some sort of deal. But listen, I know you wanted to get somebody other than Derek out. Um, it's fine. Let's work together. Let's do something where. She was pitching Tip the whole night. The whole right, night. Tip, right Tiff's gotta go. Game. Tiff's gotta go. Tiff's gotta go. I think she was in a room with Charity right in the beginning. Yes. She's like, yo, Tiff out. Tiff out. Tiff out. Charity's like, uh, all right. And I didn't want <laughs> Tiffany out because I knew I could have worked with her and I knew I could have worked with Brendan as well because they were big threats. And I knew that numbers are a big part of this game and if I had enough numbers, I would be able to all move All right, forward. fair enough. So what happened? So why did things end up flipping? Uh, to Lindsay going yeah, out? to Lindsay. So what happens is, um, and who, also I... Who, who did you want out that day? Let's, let's be more specific. So you I, didn't want Tiff out, you didn't want Lindsay out. I wanted to get a female out. I wanted to get people that were under the radar out. Right. I wanted to get like Elise, maybe Charity, mm-hmm. or Brittany. Okay, that's, and, that's fair. I mean, if I... just And also, it had nothing to do with them... I just socially did not talk to any of them, by yeah. default. It's not their fault. I just, at that time too, Elise did tell me that she wanted unfiltered fees and she saw that I was a big player and I'm like, this is not good. She has to go. <laughs> and that goes into cycle three, but I'm going to talk about that later. Okay. And so the third person, the third person on the date, I wanted to take Charity because right. I had a really good conversation with Charity. Charity's like, listen, you're t- the fact that you told me like you want to get rid of Derek tells, proves to me that you're honest and you're loyal. And I wanted to take her on the date so that way we can talk and mend things out. Listen, I threw Derek's name out because I think he was a social threat. I had nothing against anyone. We had many options, and that was the option that we all went through. So what happened with that? Because you didn't actually end up on a date. Right? No. Lindsay comes into the, the dating room instead, and I did not want that to happen because Lindsay was throwing Tiffany's name out, and Lindsay right. was a target at that point, and it was detrimental for her to go on a date with me because when you're secluded yeah. into one spot, you're not talking to people. You're literally... You're doing the opposite. You're not talking to anybody. So that really is detrimental in your game, yeah, your social game, and especially when it's two hours long. Right. So, so at that time... Apparently the people that... Uh, Chris went into a room and said a name very quickly. No one really heard him. And then Lindsay, I think, thought that she heard her name and just went right, straight to the from, room. Yeah. That's what I've heard from people from on the show. So everything I was doing was all strategy. All of it was strategy. All of it was strategy. <laughs> Most of all it. of it was strategy. But I did like everyone. Um, I have, so what happens is Lindsay, Jimmy come because uh, Jimmy and me are always in a room together. <laughs> Starting with cycle two and cycle three, we were always in a room. I was always in a room with Jimmy, and we were talking about strategy and what we were gonna do next. The Twitter followers, the Twitter and the Vine thing. Who, who gives a shit? But like, whatever. Well, I don't know. What that has to do. I don't know what has to, that has to do with the game. But um, so Lindsay, Jimmy's telling me that he wants to get rid of Lindsay. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay. I'm not going to be able to flip the vote. Like, I'm not going to be able to flip it against somebody else than Tiffany and Lindsay. I wanted to work with both of them, but they were going at each other. That's not what I wanted to do. They're big. They're both big competitors going after each other. Yeah. That is not smart. I did not want that happening. I wanted to get rid of someone that was under the radar. Low key. Low key. Let's get rid of them. They're going to be flying their way to the final five. Which, foreshadowing, they do. Which they did. And people have to talk to me before they do things. Like... <laughs> 
because the wrong people. The problem with that cycle, the wrong people were going after each other, and it pisses me off. Chris wanted to have total control over people, but being secluded in a room, not being able to talk to the right people, right. just did not allow him to do so. Exactly correct. And so Lindsay gets eliminated because Jimmy flipped it okay. against Lindsay, and everyone thought me, Lindsay, Jimmy, and Bryce were a thing. Clearly, that wasn't the case because Jimmy wanted Lindsay out. Fair, yeah, I mean, there's also happen. things we're gonna be talking about after this, like outside influence, because that's a big role. Ooh, that boy. I'm gonna talk to people like no, don't yeah. So <laughs> cycle two, she gets eliminated, but she has a chance to get back in the game. We have a challenge where we have to put pennies on our fingers, and it was pretty much an endurance comp. And if she were to have survived longer than everybody else, the person with the second most votes, would which have would have been Tiffany. Tiffany. Oh my god, what a twist that would have. I'm been. pretty sure it would have been Tiffany. I don't think it would have been me. It could unless no, nah, it wouldn't have been me. It would have been Tiffany. Who knows? Probably Tiff, but... <laughs> Correct. Who okay, knows? so Lindsay goes, and now we're on to cycle three. Okay. Cycle three, we find out we have a double elimination. So you you noticed that there were no votes on the Voyeur poll. Right. Once I found out, once there's no like voting, like punishments and awards, there's going to be a double elimination. Did you know that at the time, or did you just walk into it and be like, oh man, I can't believe this? Um... I, I, I had a suspicion of the double elimination, but I wasn't 100% set on that until right. you know until they announced it. And at that time, I'm at work. I'm thinking right. about. I'm still thinking about the the people that are under the radar, the people that are going after each other like idiots. And I'm thinking to myself, we have to do something to get rid of the people that are under the radar, so that way the bigger the bigger social threats, the strategic threats, the bigger competition winners work together to get us out so we can move forward. Okay, so what was your strategy? Who did you want to talk to the most? I wanted to cycle three. I wanted to talk to Tiffany, Zoe, and I also wanted to talk to Brendan as well. And I wanted to form something, not an alliance, because alliance names are not good. Alliance is no bueno in sequestered. I wanted to explain to them my reasoning as to why the bigger threats should not be going after each other because we would be losing numbers. Okay. So I explained to Jimmy that... Brittany, Charity, Elise, and Eddie, they've been low-key under the radar. No one's going after them. Why are they... Why? How, how come their names haven't been brought up? They're the only four names that haven't been brought up. I'm yeah. going to be mentioning them because I want to get my targets out. <laughs> and they, and honestly, in their perspective, they probably would have wanted me out. And yeah, we find out that Charity and Elise did want me out bef- even prior to saying that. So I was right by saying that. And we talked to Brennan, and I'm trying to explain to Brennan about the six and the four. I'm trying to explain to Brennan that... Listen, these bigger these bigger targets. They're if we keep going after each other, we're not going to be able to get the votes to stay yeah. longer. And Brendan and I pretty much told Brendan like, listen, I want to get rid of Lease and Charity because they've been low key under the radar. If they make it far, none of us are going to be able to survive in this game. Unfortunately, what we didn't know is how close knit of a relationship that Brendan had with Charity. Brendan, Brendan had with all of them, I'd say, yeah. especially Charity, which we find out later. Right. So what happens is Brendan goes. And I, I saw this online. Brendan goes and tells. Um, Bryce and Tiffany that I, that me and Jimmy are targeting Charity and Elise. Okay. And Tiffany says, hey, this might be a good idea. If they're going after each other, we could just watch and sit back and let them do that. And Tiffany's perspective, I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, She's very perceptive. She knows strate- strategically that if we were going after each other, they would be under the radar and that made sense. But what happens uh-huh. is Jimmy starts throwing Brendan's name out because he thinks that he, we're still going back with the Lindsay thing and I'm like, oh my fucking God, stop. And at that time, Jimmy's name was... I won the LOC. Oh, so I gotta talk about that. Okay, so we talk about the... the <laughs> How about the, the LOC The LOC won, that Chris. I won was a luck competition. The only And it was between winner. me and Eddie, and Eddie almost won that, but I was in a different room, and then I won that long comp. Very, very and good. And so... Very um, so at that time, like, everyone thought that me and Tiffany were gonna be the big targets, but people didn't want to get rid of Tiffany because Tiffany was very well likable, and... I don't know. I don't know why they didn't want to get rid of Tiffany. They got rid of Jimmy over Tiffany, and I was a little confused about why. Because I know Brittany was campaigning for Jimmy right. to stay. Because Jimmy wasn't a threat, and he's not a threat. Just because he has 900,000 followers on, on Vine doesn't mean he's a threat. His right. IQ's low as fuck. Okay, come on. Yours was pretty low, too, Chris. No, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, I'm saying, like, he's not a threat. Mentally, he's not a threat. Right. I'm mean, saying, like, I'm not a threat, he's not a threat. You know what I mean? That's yeah, sure. where, that's where we were going with that. Okay. And that's where Brittany was going with that too. And like it was so quick, like a lot of talking. Both of you have done that. Yeah, we've done a lot of talking, but within the short amount of time that we had, yeah. and it was so quick. People have to, you know, Jimmy didn't have that many social relationships with anyone oh, in there. Right. A lot so of people wanted Jimmy out because Jimmy, you know, had a, just was didn't really talk to anybody. Other people's perspectives, maybe you were Jimmy's ride or die. That's basically. pretty much what happened. So yeah. then I'm like, okay. 
So Jimmy comes in and says that he wants to get rid of Brendan, and I'm like, this is not a good idea because we just talked to Brendan about getting our targets out. If we switch our targets now, at least Charity and Brendan are all going to come after us. Yeah. And that, that's not good because we don't have the numbers. That was the 6-4 thing you were talking about before. That would now be like 5-5. Five, five. Now it's 5-4. Well, yeah, now it's 5-4. Yeah, now be, Jimmy gets eliminated. It's 5-4. Right, it would be 5-4. And I'm by myself. Literally, I'm by myself in the room because it's me and Jimmy. And now Jimmy's eliminated. And now we only have an hour to talk, play the LOC, and eliminate somebody. And it's really it's really hard to do that. What are you thinking at this point? You know you have to win this LOC because you know you're not in good shape right now. Right. Uh, one of your closest allies just left. Bryce and Zoe. Okay. The, and Brendan... It was hard because... I, because now Jimmy mentioned Brendan's name. Right. And people think that Jimmy and me are close, so they as- automatically control, assume right? that I'm with Brendan. Did you get a chance to talk to Brendan? Like for that? five seconds. Not good. And it was pretty much Brendan saying, like, listen, Chris, we knew you threw my name out there. And I said, absolutely not. It was Jimmy that came in the room and said that you want to get you out. It wasn't me. I, no, I literally did not say Brendan's name once. Only time I mentioned it was when Eddie was asking me, like, like I was talking to Eddie like during that whole entire competition. I was like, "Listen, the names that have been thrown out here are at least in Brendan's name, because that was true. Brendan's name was thrown out there at the time." Right. Okay. So I was just telling Eddie that's what the names were thrown out there, and Eddie is somebody who didn't really socially talk to me. He really was against me, yeah, and he didn't make he made it so obvious, but he was not one of those people where he didn't he didn't want to be persuaded at all. He didn't he knew he just really wanted to get rid of me, Jimmy, and Lindsay at the time. And I, I get it. Break the alliance up. Break the alliance up. But at that time, at, at that time, Jimmy's gone. Lindsay's gone. I'm by myself. Right. Who, who do I have? Bryce. No way. Right. That's it. I had nobody else I, at that time, and, and I was you, trying to campaign for that. And did, would, did you get an opportunity to talk to Bryce at all day three? At I all? talked to Bryce and Zoe, and we didn't have a lot of time to talk. And uh, then right. Zoe's n- mentioning Tiffany's name, oh, and I'm like, "Fucking god, why are these people <laughs> going after each other? This sucks." <laughs> So I'm, we are losing numbers now again because there's four people on the other side that are right. under the radar, and Zoe's mentioned Tiffany's name. And if Zoe's mentioned Tiffany's name, Tiffany knows. Like I'm talking to Zoe, and then it gets around. Right, exactly. So, <sighs> so basically, you have these low key players, and they're staying safe because all these loud players are like, exactly. get out this other loud yes. player, get out this other yes. loud player, and you're just sitting there like, what are you doing? I know. I was explaining the six and the four, and Brendan and he wasn't getting it. Oh. Man. So I get eliminated, um, and I'm not surprised. Honestly, didn't have enough time to talk to everybody. I still need to do some damage control with Derek, and just a lot of outside information also got involved in what, as well. So it made sense why I got eliminated. It wasn't because I played a bad game. It was just because. And you predicted a final four there, right? You I thought that the four people were going to be the low key players, right? And because it seemed like when I was talking to the bit, yeah, and they made it far. Final six, all of them, right? Yeah, my, no, they made it to final five. Final five? No, Bryce was five. Oh, that's true, yeah. Brittany final six. six. Well, yeah. Okay, but, um, yeah, so that was pretty much what happened. I didn't have enough time to socialize with people, and I totally understood why Brittany wanted to target me because I didn't talk to her. I understand why Elise and Charity wanted to talk, target me because I was targeting them because I was trying to get rid of the <laughs> low-key players. And then I also realized why Eddie wanted me out, too, was because he wanted unfiltered feeds and saw that was the ringleader, and that was threatening, and, and I totally understood why Chris they wanted to get me the out. the ringleader. Wow. Um, so then I got eliminated, and I watched it after that, and it was very entertaining, actually. Right, so let's talk about cycle four. Let's talk about... So the first day you're you're not on, mm-hmm. so we actually watched this together. Yes. So talk talk to me a We're little bit about We're going to be talking about cycle four. So what happens is, in the beginning of the cycle, mm-hmm. um, Bryce goes and tells Tiffany, hey, by the way, Zoe came to me during the double elimination and said your name, she's targeting you. And Tiffany already knows this from right, like cycles before that. She had but she they really didn't have like a huge argument about it. And so the whole entire night is about getting rid of Zoe. Right. And you know, LLC happens and this is Tiffany wins it. This is her second LOC. But even before the LOC, um she gets the group of four together and forms the Fatal Four. Right. She start, She forms this four-person alliance yeah. called the Fatal Four with Brittany, Eddie, Bryce, and now Tiffany is in two. Exactly. So usually the room limit is three, so she was able to use the four room limit to her advantage because she didn't have to abide by it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm done. Because so, she did not have to abide by the room limit, so she right. was able to get all the people she wanted Perfect in Perfect time together. to make a Final Four. Perfect time to make a Final Four, right? To get a nice, clean final four going to the end of the game. Right. That's exactly what she did. And that was perfect. That was the best move she could have made at and that time. And then she goes on and just crushes the LLC. Right. 
Which, who's surprised? So we find out that Tiffany wants a second LLC, and Zoe is still mentioning getting rid of Tiffany Even though to she Brittany won. to and Bryce, but she already won. So it's like, who, like, what? Why? Why are you campaigning to get rid of Tiffany when she's safe? Yeah, exactly. So, I didn't get why Zoe did that. I think personally she was like, oh, Vanessa's a sister, blah, blah. Keep that all in your head for later on. Yeah. Don't use it now when she's safe. Right. And she's pretty much just putting a huge target on her back right now because yeah. people are looking for an excuse to vote people out. So they're willing to do anything at this right. point. Because mm-hmm. they, basically in the past, all, all the loud players have left. Right. And Zoe is now being loud. Yeah. So that puts a big target on her back. I forgot who said her name first. Do you remember? Bryce was. Bryce said her name. Brilliant. Brilliant. Bryce knows he has to play this kind of game now. Yeah, he knows he's by he, himself. He has nobody left. Right. All his alliance members left. Lindsay, Chris, what's he going to do now? Yeah. All his, his day one rider dies. Well, yeah. not, not rider die because he's still there. But yeah. his, his alliance members left. Mm-hmm. And he has to now regroup and try to find <coughs> a new group. And he finds it in the Fatal Four that right. Tiffany helps form. Yeah. So what happens is... Um, they're, they added another twist called Scratch My Back and I'll Scratch Yours or something like that. Yes. And what happens is um, they are all in one room and the elimination is you. each person gets to choose one person to save. Right. So Tiffany goes because she wants LLC. She chooses Brendan. Yeah. And I think, I don't she, remember who Brendan chose actually. I don't remember who Brendan chose either. But. I just know it came down to like Brittany, um, it was like Brittany, Bryce, and Zoe. And Brittany had to choose between Bryce and Zoe. And she chooses to eliminate Zoe. Yeah. I Well, that's because Fatal 4 was made. Yeah, exactly. So they had the Final 4 deal, so that really helped them out. And you can right. tell that they were. she was actually struggling with that idea. She was like, thinking about it first. She was like, well, Yeah, because that's the I only time. Was, I think it was more for show, though. Because I know that she has a good trust with Bryce at yeah. that point. And, and, that, and if she didn't, that pretty much solidified that even if she didn't have that trust before... Not voting him out pretty much solidified. Exactly, they do trust right. each other. Very good on her part. So Zoe, they get into a huge. Zoe gets into a huge fight with Tiffany. Like I blah blah blah. Like you're yeah. like high, high high IQ whatever. Like that would have been great. You have to wait until the LOC. You and that, it's not yeah, like a fast double elimination. You have two hours. Figure out a different target. Get rid of Bryce. Bryce is like for her game. No, I'm not. I don't want to say Bryce. Maybe get rid of um, Eddie. Right, Eddie. Eddie could have been Elise. Uh, any, Eddie, any, literally but definitely anyone Eddie. else. Literally anyone else she could have gone after. Yeah. I mean, oh my god. Just she's, always have she's a She's a personal... Line. She plays her emotions too, yeah, I mean, too much. She's been trying to target Tiffany because of personal reasons. And yeah. instead of... And she should have she should have made alliances. She could have made deals with people. I know we had something going on, but she's just still... Just like, Tiffany's gotta go, <laughs> Tiffany's gotta go, Tiffany's gotta go. But she's not forming alliances. Yeah. Like, she has to... Sh- she doesn't. She doesn't really know exactly how to play the strategy part. She's just saying a name, and she thinks it's gonna happen, but it's not. It's unfortunate. Jimmy too. Jimmy's like, yeah, if I say a name, it's gonna go. But they have to, you know what I mean? Right. They have to back it up. Back it up with alliances. Back it up with strategic reasons and exactly. debate your right. Exactly. That's so why the people who played under the so radar played next so well. we got cycle five, yeah, and now we're down five. to the final seven. The but, nitty gritty fellas. But it's not final seven after this. It's final five. Oh. Two people got eliminated. Technically, it's one, but... So what happens is, this is the big cycle where it's like, personally, people wanted to make this decision. Yeah. Um, what happens is, Brendan is actually late. Like yes, He gets exactly. late. He, um, th- he's 30 minutes late. So t- tell us a little bit about why that happened. He so Brendan's, it on Brendan's dad things. got into a car accident. Yeah. And what happened yeah, is, production told them, hey, do you want to bring Brendan back into the game? And Tiffany... Didn't want to bring Brendan back in for a strategic reason. I actually don't know why. Because Brendan probably would have beat her, I would assume. Yeah, I mean... And the Fatal 4 was made. I, I understand why they didn't want him back in the game. At least the people like Tiffany and yeah. probably Bryce yeah. and uh, Brittany. Because, you know, they have their alliance. So right. they don't want to foil that. Plus, through, they were making good arguments. They said yeah. they've already spent enough time thinking without another player to have him back in yeah. would be, you know, it would just mix everything up. Mm-hmm. However, I just through my, I, you you said that if you were in the game, you would let him back in, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Because I would still be exactly. thinking about the whole people that are under the radar thing at the time. Right. Right. You would have needed him. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard argument either way. I just think that a Tiffany's name is like being like, oh, like, uh, you know, because Tiffany's like, oh, like, like Brendan's mad at Tiffany because of the whole entire 
Um, mm-hmm. Like, because his dad was in a car accident, but, but they didn't know that at the time. Exactly. If they were to have said that, obviously they land back into the game. Yeah, I, I feel like if production let them know. Like, what the, the fuck reason... is wrong with. I don't understand like why production just doesn't tell them like what's going on in the know. whole story. Like, why why do you leave half the story out? Like, Brennan, one. Brennan is someone who likes these games. He wants to be in here. He watches Big Brother. Why are you not telling him to get back into the game? I would be pissed off too. Yeah, I know. And it's very understandably so why he was upset exactly, uh, when yeah. they interviewed him later. Because he didn't get a chance to... Play the game. To play... Yeah, to He would have made it far. Well, right. Maybe. Well, we don't, we don't know what would have yeah, happened. Yeah, exactly. That's if what it was everything off. for a loop, it would have been a completely different game. We can say that much. Yeah. So... After how, Brendan couldn't get back into the game, sorry about um, how the cycle went. Right. So the reward, Tiffany gets jewelry. Yeah. And she goes like, "Oh, this might make me a target now." If I was there, no, I'm yeah. just kidding. Only if Chris, I'm just kidding. Only no, if Chris. I'm just kidding. There. It's listen. Only if you win a subway gift card is Chris gonna target you. Sorry, right. Derek. So let's talk about the punishments because yeah. there was a lot, there was actually a lot of punishments. There um, were, yeah. One punishment was Charity had to get locked into a even room, number room, an even number room, which sucked. Yeah. Charity also got the alien one where she had to wear like tin foil oh, yeah, on top of was, her head. Yeah, that was a little weird. That was interesting. At least got the spanking one. Oh, that was so weird. <laughs> And then Eddie got the cheese face one where he had to wear like oh the sandwich the sandwich that was so that was funny. awesome I was dying every time I was in a room I couldn't take it seriously right and so they got those punishments and the LLC competition they had to um, blow up a whole bunch of balloons and pop them faster than anybody else yeah so and at least won that yeah at least won that uh, Brittany came close mm-hmm. um, yeah it was basically just between those right. two and also I want to add that um, the now we have this new brand new twist. That fucks again. That another twist that's gonna fuck everything up. Yeah, oh the boy. dual match. Yes, which the means the person match. that gets eliminated gets to, gets to choose somebody to verse, and they might have a chance to win. Exactly. So whoever gets voted out gets to challenge someone. Whoever and whoever wins stays. Whoever loses gets mm-hmm. out. So you can not have anything. You, you can't have like a radar on you at all or whatever. Yeah. Like a target on you at all. I mean, and you can get out that week. Correct. I mean that cycle. Yeah, it's okay. And and it's scary. That's yeah. scary for players. So they're thinking, okay, what can I do? Who do I want to target? Because, okay, at least one... They have to convince Cherry to... to pretty much... Co- they have to convince Cherry to choose somebody. Well, I, I think she already knew who she was choosing, but basically yeah. this just means that they can't target Tiffany. That's all this means. Yeah. Because t- they know Tiffany's really good at competitions. Them voting her out wouldn't do anything because she. They probably think in their heads, okay, well she's probably gonna win anyway. Yeah. So and they can't talk and they can't challenge. Well, they could challenge her, but they could have challenged her. But I think Tiffany would have won. I it. think Tiffany would have won too. She's really good at these competitions. Yeah. So it's really put Tiffany at a good advantage, I'd say. Yeah. This twist. So what happens is Charity gets evicted, eliminated. <laughs> God. <laughs> and she versus Brittany in a duel, and it's. Intense. I know. I was, I was like, watching. <gasps> oh my god! And Brittany gets eliminated, and that's just like the fucking icing on the cake for that cycle. I, I thought what was really funny is like even after Brittany lost, she just like picked it up and tried to do it again. I was just like, <laughs> I, I just, I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I thought that was hysterical. Um, so what happens is now we're into cycle six. Yes. So after three, well, after two cycles, we have. Our second double elimination. Yes. So the voyeur poll was not up for that day as well. So people no. knew now, the players. And we're down to five people, so socializing and strategy will exactly. be coming into a big play now. So people knew it was a double eviction now. So people walk into this now, and they're thinking they have their solid three. So two right. groups think they have a solid three. Right. And basically, the, the middle vote is yeah. Eddie. Yes. So Eddie, who's originally part of the Fatal Four... Yeah. Uh, now, and the Holy Trinity. And the Holy Trinity. But now it's the Fatal Three because Brittany left. Yeah. And now he has, and he also has Charity, Elise, mm-hmm. and himself. So he has to now make a decision on what, what he wants Correct. to do. Yes. So what happens is second we have our second double elimination. First part is a cup where they have to, I think they have to stack seven cups in their hands. Uh, I think it's ten. Was it ten at this time? I think it was as many as you can. Yeah, it might have, that might have been it. Up to ten. And this is... Tiffany's third LLC win. That's right, guys. So and she cannot get eliminated this e- round. Exactly. And Charity, uh, Elise, and Eddie all agreed that if Tiffany didn't win, that they would get her out there. Right. They would get her out. Mm-hmm. So Tiffany needed that win, otherwise she was gone. That's it, yeah. She was gone, so. So what happens is um, they get rid of Bryce because Eddie knows that if Bryce makes right. it far, 
he's gonna he, win. He's gonna win. He has all the jury votes. Yeah. He has you. He has Lindsay. Probably Jimmy. Yeah. Derek would probably vote for him because he he got him out basically. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And um, yeah, so they get rid of Bryce, and Bryce was the f- first one out that night. Yeah. I got. I think it was a really good strategic move for Eddie. Yes. Yeah, I think so as well. Turning on, and that just shows that alliance is turned. Yeah, of course they do. And I don't know how into the alliance Eddie even was in the first place. Because when you're in a room of four people and they yeah. say, let's start an alliance, you're not going to just say, nah. Exactly, right? <laughs> what are you, you going to do? You're going to say yes, obviously. Exactly, right. Correct. Whether you want to work with them or not. So now we're down to the final four, which is Charity, Tiffany, Elise, and Eddie. Getting to the nitty gritty now. We're getting to the final four now, and the LLC is a black puzzle. Yes, a black puzzle. These, you you said that this looked very difficult, right? Yeah. Chris isn't good at puzzles, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, fuck you, Paul. I'm not good at puzzles. <laughs> well, yeah, it's fair enough. But, uh, so the LCs, the puzzles, and it takes a long time. Right. Because this puzzle is very difficult. It's just a plain black, I believe it was like a rectangle or yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. Some, some shape. Mm-hmm. Some shape, wow. <laughs> and basically, Tiffany was killing it. Yes. She was doing very, very well. Mm-hmm. Charity was close behind, but Tiffany had got a very strong lead early on, and she won her fourth LOC. Yeah, this is Tiffany's fourth LOC, and it's her second LOC of the, of of the, the night. De- of the night. She's dominating this game. Yeah, and again, the, the three agree to get out Tiffany if she doesn't again, win. Again, yeah. And they just didn't do it. They just, I mean, she just won. So so let's talk about this elimination, because Tiffany's safe, so now it's up to Eddie, Elise, and Charity. I'm very confused. I'm still confused on what happened during this elimination. I still don't know. So, I missed. I think it was a 2-1-1 vote, from what I've been told. I think so as well. I think Tiffany voted out Eddie. I think, yes, that's what I I don't. I believe so, I don't remember. And then I know Charity voted out... Elise, I believe. Elise? I believe. Or Eddie. No, it would have been... It was probably Elise. There had to be two votes on Charity, so it was probably... I think she voted out Elise. Right. So So it was Tiffany voting for Eddie, Charity voting Elise, because Elise said she wanted to get out. Right. And then Elise and Eddie both voting out Charity. So it was three to one, you think? No, it was two on one. I I think it was two on one. Yeah, I think... Tiffany might have voted out Charity, too. I don't know. Yeah. I don't don't know. Uh, I, I, I did. Yeah, had, I it had to be two one. Yeah, it had to have been two one one because if it was two two, it would have been a tie. Right. If it was two two, it would have been a tie, and the LOC. Yeah. The which priority. would have been Tiffany, and then Eddie probably would have went. Yeah, that would have been. Or a charity. I don't, know. Probably, probably. I don't know what would happen. I'm so, we're, we're both very confused on how the voting right. went here, but all we know is that charity ended up leaving that mm-hmm. night. But good for charity. Charity played a really good game at the end. Oh yeah, she really, she really uh, turned everything around with the. Uh, with the duel. The duel was like her turning point in the game and it really helped her. Right. She that night she had her low point with the balloons and her high point with the duel. And it's just a, it's just awesome because like two alliance members within the Fatal Four got out again, like alliance members every time they're formed, they they crumble. Yeah. Triple threats, um Fatal Four and Holy Trinity. Yeah, I mean every like, member got out. Yeah, I mean all You know the, what I mean? Yeah, basically. That's, that's, because of the that's people true. that were under the radar. Yeah. They were the reasons why they got out. That's fair. I mean, you guys have to think about it. The only reason why Tiffany stayed was because she just won everything. Yeah. If she didn't win, she would have been gone, like, Mm -hmm. any of those times. Exactly. And because of the dual twist, people were afraid she was going to win. So, basically, final six, final five, final four, she she was in a good position because she was winning. Exactly, yeah. And she already knew she had had no other choice but to win. She had to win. After Bryce left, she had nobody left. Exactly. I just repeat myself. Okay. So the last cycle is a four-part challenge where they had to guess about... The first part, they had to guess whose faces were what. So long. Um, the balloons. They, uh, they had to pop... They had to blow up 50 balloons and then pop all of them. Yeah. That they, was long as fuck, too. And they had to stack Then they had to stack cups. 10 cups, and then later it was like seven. And then they had to do a long puzzle. And they had to do well, an even harder puzzle, yeah. I believe, than, than the black one they did. This was a green one. Yeah. So let's talk about how it opened up. So right. I believe Elise, Elise was in the lead. Elise was in the lead. She was starting to pop her bubbles and um, balloons. <laughs> this gonna pop bubbles now. She was popping her <laughs> balloons, and then what happened was once she got to the cups, Eddie like it was Tiffany yeah. like on they her. Both, tr- they both caught up. Yeah, they both caught up, and then they got to the puzzle. And the puzzle was like the big thing where Elise just couldn't get it. Yeah. 
It's very unfortunate. And uh, like what happened was they didn't have the episode. They didn't have enough time, so whoever got the bigger percentage within the puzzle got to go to final two. I'm very surprised Eddie got there. Yeah, I I'm also very surprised because it seemed like he was so behind, but yeah. he he caught up. But you know, very impressed with him. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Elise, she couldn't mm-hmm. just she couldn't. Just so it. we're down to the final two with Tiffany and Eddie, and this is where like. The debating is happening. Right. Who do we vote to win? How do we base this decision? Based on, what, based on social game? We're basing off of com- competition wins, uh-huh. social game, and strategic gameplay. And that's how I was going to base my decision. I had a sense of who I was going to vote for before it even happened. Who was that, Chris? Obviously, Tiffany. Because okay. I, hey, I, I can relate to Tiffany because Tiffany and I were both targets in the beginning. Yeah, that's fair. And the fact that she survived as long as she did is like impressive. Was Eddie ever a target? Only, oh, only I was trying. Oh, yeah, you would try. I was giving it to Brendan, but then Brendan fucked that up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the questions are... Brendan and Charity had the best questions. Yeah. Brendan was pretty much just saying, like, if I was in this game, you guys would not be in the final two. How do you feel about Brendan's speech? I'm... Listen, I thought... I mean, it, it made sense in my book why he would say that. Yeah. Um... And, it, and one little thing could affect the game. And also, I think Brendan was upset because Tiffany was um, taking, credit. taking credit for Lindsay's elimination. And I think it was like mostly Jimmy, honestly. <laughs> I think it actually was Jimmy because I was watching it. Like Jimmy was trying to get yeah. Jimmy convinced Tiffany to get Lindsay out. Fair enough. Okay. So it wasn't Tiffany. At so all. okay. So it was Jimmy and Brendan. Probably. Yeah. Probably it was mostly together. just Jimmy and Brendan because Tiffany. Didn't really have a say because she was a you know an interesting duo. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure they. So that was the problem. That. that was the problem that Tiffany was having was that she was taking credit over things that she didn't really do. She was yeah. making it seem like she was a part of it, but she really wasn't. Yeah, right. And then also Eddie, Eddie claimed that. And he then Eddie got... just like I don't know what Eddie was trying to say. Eddie was also saying that he also Eddie was also trying to take credit over Charity picking up Brittany yeah. and said saying she did that in the beginning that's what she he, wanted. Voted out charity and stuff like that, and thought it was better for his game. Yeah. And Eddie, Eddie was always very, very paranoid. Uh, from what I yeah. noticed during these episodes, like in his little uh, monologues mm-hmm. when he was by himself, he was like, "Oh my god, am I going today?" And very it's just nervous. like I mean, everyone is. I, I I understand. And but I think he was very. I think he was even more. Paranoid. The questions that were asked were pretty good questions because it was like trying to convince the jury of why we should vote for you. And Charity's questions was name one, name an adjective, pretty much like an adjective to describe yeah. each. Uh, Person each, like each, each, jury, each member. jury member. Thank you, <laughs> Tiffany, for calling me influential. Mastermind. Mastermind. Apparently, I'm the mastermind. <laughs> so. Oh man. So. Yeah. I, I, I was like, whoa. These. That's guys. a big fucking word. <laughs> I was like, are you guys schmoozing or what? Yeah. <laughs> Calm down. And now. I, I wanted to vote for Eddie, but just I. Cannot get over those competition wins. Five, right? Because I would have been if I was in final two, and or if anybody was in final two, and they won four or five LOCs. Why would they not win the right. whole game? It's it's like the brothers of Big Brother. And then Adam. Elise was trying to not Elise, Eddie was trying to stress that Tiffany shouldn't win because she had to win the competitions, but she was a target from the beginning, and the fact that she survived as long as she did. Yeah. Making really? deals, and she was pay- she was playing strategically. She was making alliances. She was building trust with somebody who was out of an alliance. Like she was playing the offensive, and she did the best she could on the with the situation sh- that she was in. There were weeks where she wasn't, where she was still a target, but she still made it through without winning an LLC. And I think that's what's important here. That's what distinguishes her from, say, Eddie. So there was times where people still saw her as a threat. Yeah. She didn't win LLC. Like, for instance, when you won LLC that one time. Also, when Elise won it with the... Oh, my. I was about to say Bubbles, too. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking ruined well, my head That out. one doesn't really count because it was a duel. Yeah. That's... Nobody was going to take Tiffany because she would have won. That's fair. I think she won. Like the only time they could have gotten Tiffany out was the first three cycles. Yeah. Because she didn't win LLC until um, the fourth elimination. Which was uh, which was the one I got out of? Hey, so that yeah, yeah. I mean, but she was still able to survive even as being a target with that one. Exactly. Third LLC. Right. So you know, good for her. Right. So Tiffany wins by an eight to two vote. If it was a tie, it was going to be up to the audience. I don't know how that would have been possible. They didn't have a voyeur poll or anything, but I yeah. think it was on oh, Twitter. They probably or would have made one. 
Yeah, and Tiffany would have gotten it anyways. Yeah, she was. And she, I mean, she deserved it. Oh, the two people that voted for um, Eddie, Eddie I, th- I believe it was Eddie and. Oh my god! You ready? You get the names mixed up already. Bren- Brennan and Elise voted for. Brennan and Elise. Okay. I don't know why Elise voted for Eddie. I think because they were so close in the beginning. Probably, I and mean, they seem to have a very good um, social game going with one yeah. another. I mean, they, they were in an alliance together. To but they had, like, three. a mutual agreement to not go after each other as well. Yeah, they did. It's pretty fair. Yeah. So that was pretty much um, se- seven cycles within that week. It was crazy. I am I mean... So let's talk about your th- your thoughts on the entirety. What do you think about the whole experience? Would you do it again? Yes. I would do it again. And yeah. obviously people would strategize differently now that... I, coming into this, I didn't know that outside influence would have a huge impact on the game. Right. Play a big and part. now, going into it again, my best advice to give anyone is to shut down your social media stuff. Yeah. And just... Well, I saw that you had your uh, your Twitter hidden. Right. I was trying to hide it, but it still was up there, and I didn't want my game to be... Or anyone's, anyone's game to be flawed. Yeah, exactly. Driven and, by outside forces. Right. Things that... That are outside. Of your so control. I think one thing I would change differently would be to I don't want to say stay low because my name was thrown out there the first night. I definitely would say hiding social media accounts and telling production to, you know, not do interviews with people that are just going to throw my name out there because then <laughs> that's why Brennan was a target. That's why I was Sucks. a target. Just saying. Yeah, I mean that's, that's like they that's should funny. do the interviews and like. After the show, like they should show the interviews after the show ends, maybe, yeah, and be as fair as possible with it. That's just my opinion. You gotta talk to him, we'll do yeah, yeah but just... um, overall, um, sequester was good, it was fun. A lot of people were arguing, a lot of people were getting punishments, a lot of people were getting awards. Eat fresh, eat fresh, so eat fresh. <laughs> and Derek did not get out over the subway gift card, right? So, <laughs> overall, um, definitely things could have changed in this game. One flip. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's why this game is awesome because people have different opinions on things, and it changes everything up. Yeah, and, this, can... and the twists really do fuck everything your game up completely. Yeah, fucked can... Brittany's game up exactly. It almost fucked Charity's game up. Yeah, fucked my game fuck, up. Fucked your game. Oh my god, your game was so destroyed by that by that <laughs> date twist. Oh my god. Yeah, crazy. So it's so much. Seclusion. I'm, I'm really happy that Tiffany won it. Yeah, and also she was Vanessa Russo's sister. We, de- we didn't even mention that. Yeah, I didn't. Even, we didn't even mention that. Wow. Yeah, it just shows um, <laughs> how much game there was. That, even without yeah, it didn't have. Any I don't think. Effects. I don't think like she. She didn't play the Vanessa game. She did not play the Vanessa game. There were parts where she was socializing with people, asking questions about. Yeah, asking questions about people, and I mean, she, she didn't make deals with people either. She yeah. didn't play the Vanessa game at all. That's right, she just. That's right. I, I feel like she, if she's going to be compared to any Big Brother cat contestant, it'd be Rachel Riley. Maybe. Winning all those yeah, competitions, that's yeah. That's a pretty good comparison. Okay, guys, so this has been Reality Room Podcast episode... Is it 17 or 18 now? Uh, 18. Wow, Reality Room Podcast episode 18, t- giving you everything you need to know about Sequester 2.0. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Chris, any last words? Try out for Sequester 3.0. Great game, great week. Um, if you want to get some punishments mm-hmm. and you want to get some awards and you want to backstab people, play a really good social... I think you could play a strategic game. I would do it too. All right, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to follow Chris on social media, we'll have his thing afterwards. Yep. And uh, please follow us too. So until next time, guys. Peace. Later, Gator. Later. <laughs>